Well, good morning, everyone. It's so great to see you today. I'm especially excited as we kick off this free series today. It's a great day to begin this journey, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I just felt freedom walking outside in this spring-like weather today, huh? How about that? The birds were chirping, and it was, it's a good thing after this frigid week. Uh, it is a good day for freedom, free to watch the Super Bowl later today, or if you're like me, watch the commercials later today, and most importantly, tomorrow, free to send the children back to school. Can I get an amen, amen, amen to that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, here we are today uh, gathering in freedom and uh, beginning a journey where we're asking God over these next six weeks to do some great things in our lives and in our hearts, to be fully open, to see what he wants to say to us. Uh, Because God designed us and and wants for us to experience freedom, freedom in him that is life beyond anything that we could ever uh, gain for ourselves, what only Jesus can do in our lives. Uh, So as we begin these next six weeks that launch today, I want to invite you to be fully engaged in the journey. Um, We've been talking about it for several weeks. There's three components that work together that we're inviting everyone to be a part of. The first is to gather, be here every Sunday uh, so that we can uh, dive into the word together and lift our voices in worship and be together in community uh, as we go on this freedom journey together. Uh, Second, to be a part of a small group. Our groups are going to meet every week for six weeks, and this is a key part of this experience. Uh, We're uh, meeting in homes throughout the area, and as you think about that, You maybe have heard me say this the last several weeks, and you're thinking to yourself, that is not for me. I don't know. I've never been in a group before. I don't know what this is all about. And I just want to ask you today, would you take the step to try it? Just give it a try. Go to one meeting. See if it's something that you think you could do. I promise there will be other nice, normal people there. Uh, So if you're in a group, make sure you act nice and normal, okay, so that I'm not breaking my word. Uh, It is a really fun experience um, to gather together, to process together, to have fun and get to know each other. Uh, And it's a key way that I believe God will work in our hearts as we're on this journey, not in isolation, but together. So out in the hallway after the service, we have a bulletin board. We still have lots of groups that have openings. There is a spot for you. So you can pick the day of the week that works for you. Don't miss it. Sign up for a group today, uh, and our groups are getting started in this week to come. The third component is your personal journal. This is a guide. Now, some of you picked this up as you were coming in. Some of you haven't yet. Our ushers are coming forward right now. Uh, They're going to walk to the front, and you can raise your hand if you didn't get one yet. Uh, We'll start passing these out. We want everyone to have a copy of the guide as we go through the journal. There's uh, some spots you can find to take notes on Sundays if you'd like to, so you can even do that yet today. Uh, Now, we're... we're, uh, Uh, encouraging a suggested donation of $5 for the guides. Don't let that stop you. Please take one. We want you to have one in your hand. If you're in a position where you can help us with the donation, that's great. Or if you can help with a little more to help underwrite uh, the cost for others, that's great too. So when we exit the sanctuary today, there will be baskets that ushers will have there uh, where you can drop in those donations for the guide. I think that you'll find that this is a really... Uh, a really cool thing to go through this and uh, to dive in and to see what God has to say as a part of this journey. So when you think about the guide, a couple of tips for you. Uh, you want to uh, bring your guide with you every Sunday and especially bring it with you when you go to your group. Uh, that's a really important piece as we get started. Um, the, the guide is uh, most of the weeks designed for you to do in one sitting. So as you get ready for your group this week, plan 20 minutes, maybe up to 40 minutes, depending on your pace, to go through that week one section, uh, and then you'll be good to go for your group. If you still need one, if you're not sure, there's more in the back on your way out. Uh, we'd love for you to get one. And just keep in mind that all three of these things work together. Gathering on Sunday 
being a part of a group, and going through your guide. All of these things work together. And the, the point in all of them is that we want to do all that we can to open our lives and open our hearts to listen and to say, God, whatever you want to do, I'm ready and I'm listening. All right, are you ready to dive in? Should we get started? All right. So the theme verse for our series comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Would you read this aloud with me? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let's read it one more time with a loud voice. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Today we want to dive in and really think about what it means to experience freedom because of the presence of the Lord. Where his spirit is, we can experience freedom. We want to dive in to that today. Well, uh, just a few weeks ago, my son Noah turned six. I can hardly believe it. He's growing up so fast. When Noah was just a baby, right away, Dan and I began calling Noah the wonder child. Man, that kid was strong right from birth, and he was on the move fast. He was crawling by five months old and walking at nine months old. We kept going, slow down, man, slow down. And Noah has always had about him this insatiable curiosity Hmm, what would happen if I tipped that over? If I climbed on that, if I got into this, if I made a mess with that, that's always just been a part of who he is. Now, you may remember that I've told you about this thing before uh, when he was a really little kid. Because of his adventurous spirit, we created this safe zone in our living room. And this safe zone was was a spot where uh, we could see him from the rest of the house and and we kind of moved the ottoman in our living room space so that he was blocked into this little area. And his toys were there. And it was really well baby-proofed, you know, because we knew he would be in everything and really in dangerous places. So we always wanted to keep him contained in the safe zone. Well, as you can imagine, Noah hated being trapped in. He just thought it was the worst thing ever. And so he would, I, I know, just stand at the edge of that ottoman, and, and he would just look out into the freedom of the rest of the house with this horribly painful, pitiful look on his face, and he would just wail as if we were doing the most torturous. Don't you just look at that face and go, oh, buddy. Uh, and uh, we felt really sorry for him, but we knew he needed to stay in that spot because that's where it was safe, and so we did this for his own good. <laughs> I know that, that Noah wanted to be free, that he stood there looking out to the rest of the house thinking, oh, if only I could climb on those dining room chairs right there. I can see them right there or open those cupboards in the kitchen. And I know he was convinced as he stood there crying that all he needed was a bit of freedom. <laughs> and, you know, I think of that image because uh, not only do we have pictures of it, but, boy, that's just seared in my memory. And I think about that moment for Noah, and I think, you know, it's not just about that moment, Noah. There's going to be so many moments in your life, buddy, <laughs> when you find yourself feeling like you don't have freedom, feeling like you're trapped in and, and looking and just thinking, if only I didn't have an ottoman in front of me, if only I didn't have this barrier in my life, I'd be able to really experience what freedom is all about. How about you? Do you have those kinds of moments in your life, not standing at an ottoman, of course, but maybe you find yourself at work in your cubicle or at your desk or your counter, and you look over to one of your coworkers who has a better spot, a better position, and you think, if only I had the freedom <laughs> to be valued and to have that kind of authority as that person did. Maybe you find yourself at a restaurant and you find yourself looking at the corner of your eye at this couple over there that's just so clearly in love and enjoying the evening. And you begin thinking, my life would be so much freer if I was married or if the marriage that I was in was good and not so full of conflict. Or maybe you find yourself sitting at a traffic light hoping that your car doesn't stall <laughs> and you look 
over and you look at that really nice car that has just pulled up next to you. And you imagine what kind of freedom it would be to have that kind of money, to have that kind of car, and sit in those heated leather seats. (laughs) Or maybe, (laughs) amen, or maybe you find yourself at a doctor's office and you find yourself thinking, oh, what kind of freedom it would be if I'd be able to walk out of this appointment and not have that diagnosis, not have that treatment plan ahead, not have that thing that's going to just box me in and limit the rest of my whole life. Maybe you find yourself watching your friends daydreaming as you think of them as they're retiring, and you watch them Uh, enjoy this new kind of life and freedom and routine in life, and you just think, if only I could ever get to that point, if I could ever afford to be there in my life, I'd be free. Or maybe you're a student, and you find yourself, uh, when it's not a snow day, uh, sitting in class and looking out the window and, and thinking, man, graduation, it's just on the horizon, and if I can just get there, I will finally experience what freedom is all about. Or maybe you find yourself watching others who seem like they have no struggle with money whatsoever, and you think how different your life would be if only somehow you came into a whole bunch of money. Boy, that would be freedom. You see, this is what we do in life. We long for freedom. We crave freedom. We find ourselves looking at our circumstances and wishing that our circumstances would change so that we could finally be free. And just like little Noah being trapped inside there, uh, inside that area with an ottoman in between, we find ourselves standing, feeling trapped in as if freedom is this elusive mirage somewhere out there in front of us and we somehow want to get there, but it's out of reach. Well, today, as we begin this freedom journey, if if we're asking for God to set us free in new ways in our life, then we need to really dive in to understand what freedom is, how God talks about freedom in our lives. And here's the first thing that we have to understand. Your circumstances are not the key to your freedom. Your circumstances are not the key to to your freedom. Have you ever watched someone who has tried to just leave it all behind? (laughs) Who said, you know, life's not going well. I'm just going to move. I'm going to a new town. I'm shaking the dust off my feet, and I'm just just going. But do you know what happens? (laughs) Wherever you go, there you are. (laughs) And just moving to a different location, it it doesn't fix the problems in your marriage. And it doesn't change the anger issues that you have going on in your heart. Those things stick with you. See, you can change your job. You can change your car. You can change the diagnosis that you have. You can change the city that you're in. You can change your relationship. You can change your house. But wherever you go, there you are. You will still be you. Because here's the thing, when we think about the places of real freedom in our lives, in the inside of our souls, real freedom doesn't come from our circumstances. Real freedom is about our souls. Because the deepest kind of freedom is rooted in our souls. Real freedom targets the the places where we are weighed down those places in our lives where we are limited at the deepest level. Because the truth is, while we can certainly be in life circumstances that are binding, life circumstances that feel like they prevent our freedom, even worse than that, even more powerful than that, is what happens in our inner worlds, isn't it? How about you? For example, have, have you ever struggled with fear? Have you ever found yourself weighed down by anxiety, almost unable to move because that fear is looming so large you can't get your mind to unhinge from those thoughts, that anxiety of what might be around the corner? Or how about anger? Have you ever experienced anger in your life? 
where you feel like you could just come unhinged at any moment and you discover that it's impacting your work, it's impacting all the relationships in your lives. People are walking around eggshells around you because your anger is out of control. Or how about bitterness? Maybe for you, there's a hurt that has happened in your life, something that has deeply scarred you, something that has changed you, and you find that, that when your mind just starts wandering, anytime you have some time or a moment to think, your mind goes back to that place and you relive it, and you're bitter and you're angry because of that hurt that has happened. Or how about rejection? Rejection. That somewhere along the way you have felt this deep sense of inadequacy. That you are not enough. That you are not good enough. That you will never measure up. And you find that whenever you think you have the courage to do something and to be in a relationship or to sign up for a small group, then you feel that sense of rejection that just limits your courage and limits your ability to reach out and engage in life. See, these are just a few examples these kinds of things and and places in our lives that can be so debilitating, places that are so often hidden that other people don't know what's really going on in the depths of our lives, in the depths of our hearts. But these are the places that restrict our potential. And these are the things that poison our relationships. These are the things that suck our energy. There's no life there. And I wonder for all of us, what would happen if we began to experience freedom, real freedom, in these deep down areas in our lives and in our hearts? See, this is what this freedom journey is all about. Now, you may find yourself asking as you process this today, how in the world can I be free when my life is the way that it is? How can, I, how can I be free from rejection when I can't get a job, when nobody wants to hire me? How can, how can I be free from anxiety when this diagnosis in my life is looming so large? How can I be free from regret when this mistake that I made will affect every day of the rest of my whole life. Well, free. It is possible. Even in these kinds of things, our God dares us to believe that freedom is actually possible. Now, in your guide this week, you'll find this definition of freedom, and we want to hold on to this throughout this journey ahead. Total freedom means living completely, fearlessly, passionately, and joyfully, regardless of your circumstances, not because of them. Let's take a look at someone in the New Testament who has some really powerful things to teach us about freedom. His name is Paul. As we look at Paul today, uh, we know he is the one who authored this foundational verse for the series where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It's Paul who originally uh, penned those words um, under the authority of the Holy Spirit, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we meet this man named Paul in the New Testament book of Acts. But when we first meet him, he's named Saul, because when we meet him, he's a freedom taker. He's not a follower of Jesus. In fact, he's a persecutor of the Jesus followers. He is angry, he's vindictive, and he is on a mission. Acts chapter 9 says, Saul was breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. If he found any who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he would take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. And then the Bible tells us that, that Saul had a transformational encounter with Jesus Christ, and it changed everything for him. He experienced a light from heaven that literally knocked him down to the ground and temporarily blinded him, and everything becomes different about Saul. He has a new name. Now he's called Paul. He has a new way of seeing the world and, and a new way of being. He begins to follow Jesus. And this man who was a freedom taker 
is now all about proclaiming the freedom of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul, as we read his story in the New Testament, we find that he encountered a lot of difficult times, many hard times. He was imprisoned, he suffered, he was tortured, he was at risk, uh, his life was threatened many times. Uh, it was a difficult road for him as he proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what we find is that for Paul, his soul was centered not on his circumstances, but upon his God. One of the great uh, letters that Paul wrote is the uh, book of Philippians. He wrote it to the church in Philippi. And I love it because we often call Philippians the joy letter. Uh, Paul has these wonderful things to say. Um, if you have your Bibles, open to uh, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, the whole chapter is awesome. I encourage you to read that this week and, and meditate on that. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Paul says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then we'll go down to verse 13. Paul says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Verse 19, and my God, will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You know, as we read those words of Paul, those words that are so encouraging and, and so centering, such beautiful, powerful words, consider this. Paul wrote this from prison. Boy, I just can hardly wrap my mind around that. A joy letter written from prison. And the kind of prison that Paul would have experienced is something most of us can hardly imagine. Chains, being confined, being deprived of basic human rights, the darkness, the filth, the stench. Everything about a jail cell, especially the kind that Paul would have been in, points towards discouragement and hopelessness. But listen to how Paul writes. What comes out of him in a jail cell? Let's listen again to these words that he wrote. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, thanksgiving from a jail cell, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And he said, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And he says, and my God will meet all your needs. Man, that does not look like a place where all your needs are met. He says, my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of the glory in Christ Jesus. See, can we wrap our minds around the power of the scripture today, of the witness today? As we think about that theme verse today, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That by the power and the presence of God, we can experience freedom when nothing about our circumstances gives us freedom. And that's huge for our lives because the truth is, again, your circumstances are not the key to your freedom. Your God is the key to your freedom. You see, the deepest freedom that you can ever experience does not come from rearranging the circumstances of your life. The deepest freedom you can ever experience comes from inviting God to do a work in your life, an incredible work that only God can do. You see, that's why Paul could write those things from a prison. He says, do not be anxious. Paul says, peace will guard you. Isn't that amazing? He's, he's literally being guarded by soldiers and by chains around him. And he says, peace will guard you. Wow, I just can't get over that. 
You see, the freedom that God gives us is greater than any other kind of freedom. So today, I want you to know, as we start this journey, you don't need to dismiss it or blow it off just because you feel bound by some circumstances in your life. Because God gives freedom. Sometimes he does it through our circumstances, but often he does it in spite of them. To be free, to trust, free to hope, free to belong, free to love and be loved, free to fully live. And I want to remind you today that your God is relentlessly committed to your freedom. He craves freedom for you. And we will see this time and time again in the weeks to come. So as we begin this journey, I want to ask you to open your heart today and invite God to do whatever he wants to do. And can you imagine what God might do? Can you imagine what it will be like to experience freedom like you've never experienced before? I can hardly wait to see what's in store. You know, I think about little Noah standing there by that ottoman in his lack of freedom. (laughs) And I wanted so much for Noah to know, buddy, you can have freedom right where you are. Look behind you. All the good toys are in there, and we spent a lot of money on them, you know? And it's a safe place, and there's, there's freedom there. But, you know, he just couldn't get it. And so sometimes, oftentimes, I remember what I would do is I'd just climb over the ottoman and I'd sit down with him and I'd hold him and calm him down. And then I'd introduce him to the freedom that was all right there around him, right there at his fingertips. And, you know, I know that's what God does with us, our God who comes to dwell with us, to join us in those places where we find ourselves wailing and wishing we could be free. And Jesus comes to be with us and to introduce us to freedom right where we are, not because our circumstances have changed, but because he is with us and we are not alone. You see, at the center of all of this is Jesus Christ. Jesus who loves us and came to dwell with us. Jesus who says to us, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So today as we begin this journey, we want to start that by taking communion together. By recognizing that Jesus is the center of it all. And he invites us to experience his presence in the places where we need it most. It was Jesus who gathered with his disciples in an upper room. And the scripture tells us that when he had given thanks, he took bread and he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Today, I want to encourage you as as we take communion together to be reminded that God is with you. That Emmanuel comes to dwell and to be near you, right where you are. So as we begin this journey today, I encourage you to to recognize the presence of Jesus in your life. As we practice communion today, I want you to know we practice open communion. That means if you're from a different uh, Christian church tradition, uh, we want you to know that all who choose to follow Jesus are welcome to partake. Today, we're going to take communion by being served in our seats Uh, And I want to encourage you to take these moments to pause and to reflect and make these moments of prayer. The plates will be passed in front of you and you can take the elements and 
Uh, we have two cups that are stacked together, so make sure you take both of the cups, and you'll find that the lower cup has a small piece of unleavened bread, and the top cup has juice for you to partake. So if you would take both of those cups and then hold them, and then in a few moments, we will partake together. Let's pray as we prepare our hearts. Our gracious God, we're so grateful as we bow our hearts before you to know and to recognize that you are with us and that you are the God who still comes to dwell with us and among us and that you are the freedom giver. And so God, I pray today that you would help each one of us to experience your presence and your love afresh and anew. Lord, we love you. And it's in the name of Jesus, our Savior, that we pray. Amen.